What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're gonna to be talking about five tips for wide receivers to never drop a pass. Let's get started. Now, before we get into this video, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and you would like to get faster this summer, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to 75 plus speed and agility drills all mapped out for you guys with the exact sets and reps to do. And we place the drills into specific categories so you can have the information organized and it is easy to follow. So check out that very first link in the description below if you want to get faster. Let's get back to this video. All right, guys, so when it comes down to dropping a pass for a wide receiver, I think 99% of all drops come from a wide receiver not looking the ball incorrectly. So there is a phrase that I say that seems to help my wide receivers, that seems to help me when it comes to looking the ball in when a pass is thrown to you, right? Because every single coach that's ever coached football has probably told a receiver or a DB or somebody who drops the ball to, hey, just make sure you keep your eye on it. Look the ball all the way in. Now, sometimes that may not process the best for an athlete. Sometimes, hey, just look it in or, hey, keep your eye on it. May not process the best for you, right? Every single athlete's different. Every single person's different. They have a different mind. They process information differently. So a phrase that I've seen a lot of success with, and this may work for you. This may, may it may not work for you. But again, we're going to give you some other things throughout the course of this video that may process for you. But this one is take a photo of the ball with your eyes. Right, So this one really processed for me, especially on over the shoulder passes. But something that I think of is that your eyes are a camera. And when that ball makes contact with your hands, you are trying to take a photo of the football. Like the only thing in your line of vision is these like four quadrants of the football or wherever you catch the football. Like literally, that's the only thing. It's not this football and then this tree over here. Like I'm kind of half in one eye, half out. The whole entire football. Take a photo of it like a family portrait of this football when it hits your hands. Now, again, that may not work for you. That might seem weird to you but it may process for you and it may make you a better pass catcher. But like I said, we're going to give you more things throughout the course of this video, but taking a photo of the ball or taking a photo with your eyes is one of the best ways to make sure you don't drop passes. All right, guys. So now the second reason that I feel wide receivers drop passes is incorrect hand placement. So we're going to be talking about over the shoulder passes, like tough catches that are low as this video goes on, the hand placement for those. But the hand placement for just a normal catch, guys, like when the ball makes contact with your hands, the one spot that you do not want to be is your palms. You do not want this ball bouncing off of your palms because when it bounces off your palms, it makes this real loud noise. When the quarterback throws that thing with some heat, you're almost like pushing that football away. You have to make sure that you absorb the catch. Catch. And by absorbing the catch, I mean catching the ball in the webbing of your hands. So what do I mean by webbing of my hands? We've got some questions about that. I've said that term before in the past, and a lot of people don't know what I mean by that. I don't mean fingertips. You don't want to try to catch in your fingertips. That's how you're going to jam a finger. It's going to hurt real bad. You want to stay in like literally the fingers, the webbing part of your hand. Don't let it make contact with the palm. That's why it's so important for wide receivers to have a strong grip. So doing exercise like fingertip push-ups, pull-ups, farmer's carry where you're holding really heavy dumbbells and just walking with them. Anything that strengthens those fingers will make it a lot easier to catch any pass over the shoulder, low, right to your chest. Stay off of the palms. You guys have probably heard the phrase before, you want to have soft hands. Soft hands comes from catching the football in the webbing of your hands. So don't be that guy that makes this real loud noise every single time that ball hits your hands. All right, guys. So now another way that wide receivers can stop dropping passes is by focusing on something on the football. So this is another thing that I've seen a lot of success with wide receivers. Like again, when you're training wide receivers, like we train a lot of wide receivers across the country in California where we are from and you find out a lot of things about how certain athletes process things in their mind right so we're constantly trying new things like constantly new phrases explaining it a different way and that's on the coach right like a coach like coaches it pisses me off because a lot of coaches just have one specific way of doing something they have one phrase they have one idea and then if it doesn't process for the athlete they blame it on the athlete and say oh well he's just not getting it oh he's just not listening to what i'm saying no maybe you need to change your approach and try to explain things a little bit differently so the individual athlete can get it because that's our job as a coach to make sure our players understand what we are trying to explain to them. You're not a good communicator. That's just the fact of the matter, right? So when it comes down to catching, that's the mistake that a lot of coaches will make. They'll say, hey, look it in. Make sure you watch it in. It's like that doesn't necessarily process for every single athlete. Some of you might be thinking, well, how does that not process? That's one of the easiest things to understand. And that's great, but that's not everybody, right? So another thing that you can think of is focus on something on the football, right? We talked about taking a photo earlier in this video. Maybe we focus on something like the threads. Maybe we focus on the stripe, something that you're looking for where that ball's flying through the air. So if that ball's flying through the air and you're looking at the stripe, that means that you are looking at the ball and that means you're looking it all the way in. So you need to find different, if you struggle looking the ball and you struggle with drops, you need to find creative ways or ways that process for you mentally that's gonna ensure that you look this ball in every single time. 
All right, guys, so now the next thing I want to talk about that's going to help wide receivers stop dropping passes is having a verbal cue for something that you look at on the ball, like we discussed in the last part of this video. So, so when I used to coach receivers um, in high school, we used to have this everyday drill that we would do where I'd have receivers, I'd be throwing to them, I'd have receivers running directly at me, I'd throw them a ball, and then I would have receivers run to the left, run to the right, and I would throw them a ball, and then we'd do like an over-the-shoulder pass, and that was kind of our everyday drills, right? Did I think we should have been doing other things? Yeah, probably, but that was great for their hands. My receivers did not drop a lot of passes because they caught about, I would say, in that specific period alone, each one of them caught about 12 to 15 passes, right? And we were moving fast. We only had five minutes to complete that, so we were going. But on every single catch, what we made our wide receivers do was when it hit their hands, they had to verbally, and if they didn't verbally call it out, they had to do push-ups. They had to verbally call out whether they saw threads or laces or no laces. So they had to call it out. If they didn't call it out, like I said, it was push-ups. The rep did not count. So they'd be running at me. They would catch it, look it in, and they would say laces. They'd had to yell it out, or they would say no laces, even on the over-the-shoulder pass. So that forced them to have to look the ball into the tuck, or at least watch the ball to their hands so they could see what they are looking for. Now, another thing that I've seen coaches do is put like on the four points of the ball, they'll number it. They'll put the number one right here, two, three, four. And when that ball comes, you've got to call out whatever number you see. Having to look for something on the ball and holding yourself accountable to verbally call it out is one of the best ways to make sure that your receivers are looking in and yourself is looking it in. Now, if you don't want to yell it out, you don't got to yell it out. Just say it to yourself. Make sure that you are looking for something on the ball because that can also process for you mentally best and help you stop dropping passes. All right, guys, so now we're going to be talking about how wide receivers can stop dropping over-the-shoulder passes. So when it comes down to an over-the-shoulder pass, I, this isn't necessarily so much like a drop. You're just giving a DB a chance to be able to make a play on this ball because when it's over the shoulder, all the same things apply, right? You want to catch the ball in the webbing of your hands. You want to make sure that you are taking the photo of the ball. You're looking for something on the ball. You're calling out whatever you see. All those things that we just discussed will help you be a more successful pass catcher when it's an over-the-shoulder ball. Now, something that a lot of wide receivers will do is when that ball is thrown up in the air they will be running and they will show their hands and raise it to the ball now let's put this into perspective if i'm running a deep corner deep post deep fade usually what do i have right on my hip let's say it's a fade i probably got a db right on my hip so the second i start to show my hands i am letting him know that's where the ball is going to be. And as soon as that ball makes contact, he knows exactly where to punch through and knock the football out. Or he knows when to get his head around and try to make a play on the ball. You've got to be late with your hands. And you cannot be late with your hands if you don't trust your eyes and you have good eye discipline when it comes to looking the football in. So let's say a football's thrown over the shoulder like this. I don't want to show my hands early. I want to be as late as possible. Don't catch it below your waist, obviously. But we want to be right here because that means that that DB won't have a chance to see your hands, make a play on your hands, and you can easily put this thing away without giving him an opportunity to get a PBU and knock the ball away. So fellas, stop dropping over the shoulder passes by showing that DB where that ball's going to be. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to get faster and want 75 plus speed and agility drills that you guys can do with the exact sets and reps all mapped out for you, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that. I'll see you guys next time.